In this Unity tutorial today we're going to look at animating an object via code and we're going to make a cube spin on all X, Y and Z axis. So let's get underway. We're going to start by creating a 3D project and we're just going to call it Cube Rotation. And we're going to create the project. Once the project has opened we're going to go up to Window and we're going to go down to Layouts and we're going to select Default. This way we'll all be working from the same setup and your inspector and everything should look like mine at the moment. We're going to be working with the 3D project, so if you're in 2D, you can click back to 3D and we'll turn the light shading off at the moment. And the first thing we want to do is place a, an object on the stage, so we're going to go down to 3D object and we're just going to put a cube. The main reason for using a cube, it's going to give us an X, Y and Z axis. So the first thing I want to do is rescale this cube, so I'm going to go over here and just change it to the size of 3, not 31. Go to just highlight it again. Go to 3 by 3 by 3 and this gives us a cube and if I hit play we can actually see a cube on our stage. So what we want to be able to do is control this cube via code. So to do this we're actually going to come down and create by a right mouse click and go folder and we're going to call the folder scripts. This helps us keep everything organized and we're going to go inside our assets and scripts and we're going to create a new script. And we're working in C Sharp, so we're going to be creating a C Sharp script. We need to give it a name, so I'm going to call this cube underscore rotation. And then I'm going to double click cube rotation. On my laptop, it actually opens up into what's called Mono Developer on a Mac. Um, you may have another application that allows you to write C Sharp script and you'll be able to save that and associate it with the object. So very first thing we need to do is actually come in and look at the update section. In here we want to be able to transform and rotate. So we want to start with transform and you can either click on it or you can actually type it all out or if you push space it will select it and what we want to be able to do is rotate and push space and then we're going to open up a bracket in here we actually have our X, Y and Z angles so this is the area which controls our rotation and I've just put a comment in here and our rotation is the amount or degree of rotation per frame and remember that it's working on our X, Y and Z frames. Now you don't need to worry about writing this comment in, this is for developers, but it just reminds us that you know what we put in here between these two brackets is going to X, Y, Z separated by commas and also the amount of rotation. So we could actually put in physical numbers, but what I want to be able to do is declare some variables. So I'm going to head up to the public class area and in here I'm going to declare some variables. So I'm going to go public and it's going to be a float and we can give it a variable name so I'm going to call it x underscore speed and I'm using a pothole case which we're going to rotate the x speed at 5 degrees and now what I want to be able to do is place the x speed in these brackets here so if I come back down here and put x you will see that it comes up I can push space comma and let's not move the y axis or the z axis at the moment and we'll go and save this command s click back into our frame and you'll see the cube rotation script is here. Because I've saved it on the other side you can actually see the code written in here. But what we need to do is associate this script with this object. So I'm going to select cube up in our hierarchy and then I'm just going to drag the script across and drop it. This will associate that script with this object. Now that it knows the cube is there, let's run the cube. Okay we have some errors in our compiler so let's go have a look. And when we go back into our script, what you'll actually find is that we need to place a semicolon at the end of this script here. I need to save that now. Head back. I'll just click over here. You'll see the updates now occurred. And you can see X speed and 5 here. So the variable that we declared as a public float has also come across to here. So let's run our application. Now we're only working on the X axis. Now the X axis is the red axis which is here, which is the side of the cube. The camera is looking this way, so it's going to rotate around and flip towards the camera. And that's what it's doing at the moment. 
So now let's control the Y and the Z axis. So if you want to spin it around, you can do so. It still works from the camera angle when you go into the runtime, but it allows you to look at the different areas of your object. So let's go and do the other sections. So let's Alt Tab back in. And what I want to do is public float again, and this one's going to be the Y axis, and then we're going to have the Z axis. So let's change this to Y. Let's change this to Z. And then in our scripts down here, I could have the number, but if I declare them as variables, I can adjust them on the main interface. So this is going to be our Y speed. And this is going to be our Z speed. And I want to change the speed to these. I'm going to drop these down to three and three. I'm going to save this, Command S. When I go back in and the refresh occurs, I'll click on projects so we see the assets. When I click the cube, you'll notice now we've got all three variables. So when I go run, it's now turning on all axes. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. So click like and subscribe and have a look through my channel with other Unity tutorials.